of hope, stories of promise, these are the things you can find with Breastlink. And we're here with Christine. Hello, Christine. Hi, Connie. How are you? I'm so good. Tell me about your diagnosis and this journey you've had with Breastlink. I first want to start. I want to thank you for allowing me to share my story. <laughs> and um, my journey started back in 2015 mm -hmm. and I was diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma. Mm -hmm. um, I went in for complaints that I had and Dr. Curcio uh, at Breastlink, she said, you know, I'm just gonna, we're gonna err on the side of caution, make sure everything's okay. Because, because up until then, Christine, <clears throat> you really considered yourself a pretty healthy person. You had a Dr. Gonzalo that saw some things she didn't like in your mammograms. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. She did. She saw something that would have not been easily found. I would not have found it on a self-exam. Mm -mm. um, but with her persistence, uh, she made sure that I was um, given a battery of tests. Yes. Different mammograms, ultrasounds, biopsies, wow. MRIs. Very, very specific to making sure what she saw was, in fact, what she thought it was. Exactly. And then from <laughs> there you went to... Dr. Curcio, mm -hmm. yes. yes, I went to Dr. Curcio and from that point, um, that's where our love story started, I guess <laughs> I'll say that. Um, yeah. I have been with Dr. Curcio for some time yeah. throughout the years and um, sh Dr. Curcio is what just... What can you say? It's not enough time, but I'll give you, I'll try to give it to you in a nutshell. Dr. Curcio is phenomenal, caring, compassionate, um, in what she does. She's very direct, Yes. Um, but I love her approach. She works for me. Mm -hmm. And um, the care and the compassion that I felt from her was um, when my insurance changed. My insurance had changed, right? and um, she was not on staff at the hospital that my insurance covered. Oh. Um, so from the relationship that she and I have built over the years, and now to be diagnosed with breast cancer, and to realize that my insurance, she doesn't, she, excuse me, she's not a physician at the hospital that my insurance covers, mm -hmm. I automatically just go into a slump. Like, what does all this mean? Oh. In other words, she's not gonna do my surgery, this is what I'm thinking. So your good friend, this doctor that you've seen for years is now not going to be around at the most important time. That's what I thought. Oh. But we had a plan B, uh -huh. I didn't know about. So Dr. Curcio says, Christine, don't worry about it. I'm going to get emergency privileges. I'm doing your surgery for you. How did she do that? I, I don't know. I think there's, I don't know what the protocol is, yeah. but it has to be major. These doctors don't have to do that. Who does that? Who does Who that? Who does that? Dr. Curcio did. <laughs> <laughs> but just when I thought about it, I'm like, this is beyond anything I could, you know, expect mm -hmm. to go through something like this and then have my dream doctor actually be able to perform my surgery, mm -hmm. I just, it's overwhelming when I think about it now. That almost brings me to tears when I think about it because the compassion, she didn't have to do that. She mm -hmm. doesn't, she's, she's fine where she is. She did not have to take out the time, go through whatever process it is in order to do my surgery at a hospital that she's not affiliated with. Mm -hmm. She didn't have to do it, so. And at Breastlink, you feel this compassion. You feel the compassion from the time you hit the door to the time you leave. It is like I have my own uh, team over there. It's the Christine team. <laughs> and everybody is, I mean, from the time you hit the door to the girls in the lobby, um, oncology, mm -hmm. everybody just treats you like you're a part of the family. It's a family environment. That's what it is. It's not like anything traditional I've ever seen. My, my husband would say, how can you go to the breast cancer doctor and you're smiling and laughing and every time you go in there that's what you're doing I'm like because honey this is different this is just it's it's just different the mm -hmm. way they make you feel you know they care you know they care and that bolsters your confidence yes it does it does because you I had a some obstacles that I had to overcome mm -hmm. Tell throughout me about my those. surgeries yeah. um, I did get a few infections oh. I had a rejection of 
um, the expander device that they put in after mm -hmm. my double mastectomy and immediate reconstruction. So I had four surgeries in a four month period. Four surgeries in a four month period? Yes. That must have been so, that must have been just overwhelming. It was, yes. it was very overwhelming. Um, there were some dark days, yes. but through the reassurance of my doctors, Dr. Curseal was like, you're gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be okay. You're mm -hmm. gonna get through this. And I had to have that belief and I had faith in her and said, you know what, she knows what she's talking about. She wouldn't steer me wrong, she hasn't so far, so I'm trusting what she's saying and I'm just gonna put this smile on, I'm gonna get through it, and here we are. Today. And then how did that affect you? How did that confidence affect your healing? The confidence and the positivity, I think that really did help me get through mm -hmm. the times when I was having some difficulty and with some of the surgeries that I had. It, it really helped me because in the back of my mind, I could always hear her say, you're gonna be fine. And it just kept me going positive. It kept me in the right direction. I didn't hang on to that too long. Right, and so she was saying that this good method of confidence that you had was definitely a part of your healing. That's what she told me. She said, it was your mindset. Your mindset got you through because you stayed positive. You did not give up. You mm -hmm. stayed focused on the positive <laughs> side of it. So, so it sounded like Team Christine. It was Team Christine. Was ready to do battle. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was definitely gonna win. I was in for the war and I was gonna win it. <laughs> and I did, I feel that I did. So you showed up fierce. I did, I did. Each time we, we that's how I came in. Selfies, no matter what, sometimes. Selfies. Selfies. Selfies with. Dr. Kersey on Dr. Gown. Dr. Gown took a he, selfie with you. He did. <laughs> when was this? Pre-surgery. Well, you brought here something very special. What is this right here, Christine? Pick that's, that up and hold it. Let me see that. Well, that's a tiara, this lady. This is my tiara <laughs> that I had on pre-double mastectomy surgery. Oh, my goodness. While Dr. Curcio, we took a picture <laughs> with it. Oh, I see. And here we have our picture. There you are. Yes. With Dr. Curcio and your tiara on. And my tiara. Well, that's a big smile. You're heading into surgery. Yeah, I'm going to be fine because she's right there by my side. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, we're going to make it through. We're going to pull through. And we did. And she held my hand when I was going, when they were giving me um, the anesthesia. Yes. She held my hand and I felt a little discomfort. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at her, that was, that was the last face I saw. And I knew I was gonna be okay. And she held my hand all the way through. Oh my goodness. Phenomenal. And it is phenomenal and unusual. It is. I've been through surgery before. Mm -hmm. I haven't had that type of I haven't had that before. What I had with her, I don't know what, I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, what would you call that? It's, it's this compassionate care. It's kind of going above and beyond. It's that family feeling. It is. It's something that is just, I think it's unheard of. I think it's unmatched. I've had few, a few surgeries, and it could have gone the total, a total different way. Mm -hmm. But I just think that there's something that is within that team at Breastlink that takes it to another level. That's just what I think, based on what I've gone through. And I see you're wearing pink. All the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> they call me the pink warrior. The pink warrior. That so in it. your life, at work and at home, you are the pink warrior. I am. I am. <laughs> I am. And Breastlink was right there beside you every step of the way. Every step of the way. There wasn't a time if I needed to call I could call if I needed anything. I was gonna have surgery, mm -hmm. and it was said, you're gonna have surgery tomorrow. We don't know what time, but surgery's gonna happen because it was pretty much emergency surgery. Yes. But uh, we'll get you in. So and they had to just kind of fit you in? They fit me in. Into a very busy schedule. Surgeons are usually so busy. They're swamped. They are swamped. They don't, it's just, that's what they do all day. But they never made me feel as though I was a burden. It was, we're gonna fit you in, we'll get you in, we'll uh, call you with the time. And it sounds like, Christine, in your diagnosis, the, the, the cancer was in an unusual place. It was difficult to detect. If there hadn't been the persistence of, in the first place, it may never have been found. That is, that is how I truly feel. I mm -hmm. do feel that way because it was so far back, I could not have found this on a self-exam myself. Yeah. So I just think because of the persistence with Dr. Curcio, with Dr. Gonzalo, with mm -hmm. that entire staff, Dr. Kabaska, mm -hmm. they were extremely persistent. 
thorough and persistent. They but were. Then they were able to address that issue, and after that was the reconstructive surgery where the infections came in. These yes. rare, yes, unusual. Tell me about that. I had an infection. Um, they called pseudonomus. It's very hard to treat with an oral antibiotic. Mm -hmm. You almost have to get an IV type of antibiotic with it. But once they diagnosed that, that's when the emergency surgery came in to get the expander out, and that was going to clear that up. So it was pretty difficult during that time. And that could be such a frightening process, but because you were with Restlink, it was not as frightening for you? It was not. I had I had a couple calls with Dr. Curcio after hours, and she called me right back. After hours? After hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, she, had to, she called me back mm -hmm. um, because I, I had a concern, but it was never an issue for her to call me back, or she'd send me an email, or whatever the case may be, she was right there. I always knew she was just a phone call away. And she told me, if you have to go to the ER, I'm on my way too. Nobody's touching you. Wow. She was very, that, that, that's Dr. Curcio though. Oh. She's extremely <laughs> compassionate and caring about her patients. And she's like, it, it, so you'll be fine based on what I'm seeing. I would send her pictures like, Dr. Curcio, how's this? Okay, come on in tomorrow or whatever the case may be. But if you end up in the ER, I'm on my way too. And I love the fact that she said, come on in. Come on in. Come on, you're welcome, come on in. Come on in. And Just it was never too questions. much. It was no questions asked, you know, and they didn't make you feel like any question that you asked was the wrong question. Mm -hmm. Any question that I had, they had an answer for it, and I never felt like I was bothering them. Some, sometimes you just, you get scared, you know, when you're talking to a doctor, but I felt like I was talking to a family member, and they talked to me in layman's terms, where I could understand what they were saying. It wasn't all these technical terms right. that I would never understand. So you always had the, the best information readily available to you to give you confidence. Well, what do you think, what would be your advice to give to someone who may be afraid in this process? Breast link, um, ask all the questions that you can. Um, you have to be your own advocate. Yes. Um, and the fear has to be set aside, but you have to have that type of connection and bond with your doctors mm -hmm. and trust in your doctors. And how has Breastlink given you that kind of connection in a way that no one else has? Hmm. I think just the, the, the overall moral support, just just being there, just knowing and that they're always just a phone call away. Nothing is ever too much or too little. Whatever they need to make it happen, it's gonna happen. If there's not an authorization given by your um, your your insurance company, yes. they're still going to get it done. They're not <laughs> going to put you on the back burner waiting for an authorization. They're not doing it. So it's, you know, we have to take care of the patient now and we'll deal with the other things later on, but right mm -hmm. now we have to make sure our patient is okay. So they just, it's just something totally different than anything I've ever experienced. Well, so. it sounds like your experience and your journey with Breastlink has been one that's left you with a feeling of hope, of positivity? Exactly, you took those words from me and I, that's what I was gonna say, it really did. It gave me a different appreciation for life. Um, you know, I just feel that I can get through anything. I'm just, I just feel that I can and I will, and I do. And it's, it was just the most positive, it's so overwhelming when I talk about it. It was just the most positive experience I ever went through in my life for breast cancer. I mean, when I talk about it, when you hear about breast cancer, it's not like this. Mm -mm. And no matter what, I just felt like I was chosen for this. This was supposed to happen to me. Mm -hmm. And there was a reason that this was supposed to happen to mm -hmm. me. And everything that I went through, it helped me become a better person today. Well, I'm so glad that you've been here with us today to share this story. Thank and you. And I love hearing that it's something that you feel is a victory. I do. I truly do. It, it really was a victory for me. Oh, it's wonderful. Christine, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you and so much. And thank you, all of you, for watching this with us today at BreastLink. We'll hear more stories about the BreastLink patients and the journey that they've been on.